Hello and welcome everybody, Gage here from Sharp, excited to have you with me for another episode of Battle of the Blades. In today's episode, we are uh, battling the Yoshikane 210mm Gyuto Kritsuke style versus the 240mm Gyuto Kritsuke style from Tosa Ichi uh, from their Algami Super line. So as the name implies, this guy is made from Algami Super, uh, has a stainless cladding on it, which means uh, three layers of material, two outer layers are stainless, core layer is carbon. Only past the little wavy line, which is referred to as the clad line, is their exposed carbon steel which can rust or discolor if not kept dry and clean so it's important to have a damp towel next to your station while you're working away make sure you wipe the knife down before you put it down on the board for any length of time uh, hoe wood handle with buffalo horn ferrule on it balance point on this guy is quite far forward it's uh, right about there so you would not be able to use a pinch grip uh, at the balance point on this guy unless you uh, don't mind slicing your fingers a little bit uh, so the balance points gonna be a little bit further forward of your pinch grip, which I actually really like, especially when uh, you're doing up and down chopping motion and stuff like that. Really nice flat profile on this guy. It does have a little bit of a belly to it, curves uh, ever so gently up towards the tip. Uh, the handle is pretty no frills, but uh, there's no bumps, gaps, or spaces or anything. Handle installs done really nicely as well. Uh, fit and finish on this guy is pretty good. Um, could be a little uh, uh, more sanded in the choil and on the spine, but all in all, feels pretty good in the hand. Um, overall, uh, quite a light knife, especially at the 240 millimeter range, um, and quite aggressive uh, uh, tanto tip on this guy. Taking a look at the Yoshikane, this guy's made from white steel, white number two? Yes, white number two, I was correct. Uh, also has a stainless cladding on it. So again, make sure you're keeping this guy uh, wiped down, dry and clean. Uh, white number two is not gonna have quite the same edge retention as Algami Super in most cases. I guess we'll figure that out today if that's uh, if that holds true. Uh, white number two is one of my favorite steels to sharpen though. It takes an edge extremely easily and uh, gets very, very sharp with little effort. Um, quite a bit different from the Tosa Ichi is the Yoshikane. Uh, this is a Senjo made knife, so very similar to uh, all the other knives that come out of that region. It's gonna be a little thick out of, this, out of, the, uh, out of the handle insertion point, uh, but it does have a, quite a nice uh, taper down towards the tip. Um, uh, really nice edge geometry on this guy as well. Very, very thin behind the edge. Uh, balance point on this guy is right about there which is basically like right at the pinch grip. So it feels very, very balanced in the hand. Uh, walnut handle with uh, uh, buffalo horn ferrule on this guy. I should have mentioned that the uh, Tosa Ichi is octagonal in shape as is the Yoshikane. So both of these guys are suitable for righties and lefties. A Little bit more weight to this guy as well, um, as is characteristic of most Sanjo made knives, uh, but feels fantastic in the hand and the uh, fit and finish on this guy is really nice also. Very nicely sanded it down at the spine and in the choil. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into our cutting tests. We're gonna start uh, things off with the carrot. Okay, initial thoughts with this guy. Spectacular, stupendous, absolutely amazing. Uh, I really have nothing bad to say about this guy. Um, entry into the carrot was phenomenal. Uh, my little tip work uh, when I was doing the rounds with the tip, very, very easily, very easy, very little effort to go through, felt like I was cutting nothing. Um, I'm always a little bit uh, skeptical about these knives going through the larger root veg because I'm always afraid that the thickness at the spine is gonna make uh, them kind of wedgy, but uh, no such thing happened with this knife. Um, doing uh, my up and down uh, pulling motion felt effortless as well. Um, food release on this guy is very, very nice. Uh, we obviously had a little bit of uh, stickage on the blade there, but I was not finding that uh, ingredients were like uh, mushing into my finger there, which is always a, a big pet peeve of ours here at the shop. So um, all, all, uh, all sort of standard tests that I do with the carrot pass with flying colors with this knife. Um, yeah, I really have uh, nothing bad I can say about this. So uh, we'll move on to the Tosaichi and see how it does. Okay, uh, first thoughts on the Tosichi Agami Super Carrot Test. I am blown away by this knife. Uh, I guess one thing we should point out here is the, the price difference between these two knives. So the Yoshikane shorter knife uh, is gonna go for around uh, like 500 Canadian. I think it's a little more than that. The Tosaichi is gonna go uh, for, I believe it's around like 270 or something like that. Um, Jake will throw the prices up uh, for you so you know exactly. Um, but yeah, almost double the price for, for the Yoshikane for a slightly shorter knife. Um, 
I, I mean, you guys saw me cutting. That was pretty amazing. I, I would say uh, very, very similar to, to the uh, performance that we had on the Yoshikane. I'll admit the, the, the feel in the hand isn't quite as luxurious as the Yoshikane. Um, I'm really, over time, I'm starting to gravitate more and more towards these uh, thicker spined knives. They really just have a beautiful feel in the hand. And not that this feels bad, but um, I don't know, something about how thin the spine is. And this is coming from a guy who used to shop exclusively for these razor thin knives at, at the spine and behind the edge. So uh, I don't know, my attitude is changing over time the more and more of, of this sort of style of knife I try. Um, with all that said though, this this uh, Tosaichi, man, uh, it, uh, it's really performing well. Um, I guess maybe that goes to show you that the, the performance of the knife out of the box uh, isn't always indicative of its maximum uh, performance. Um, if you have some skills sharpening and you're willing to put in a little bit of effort, like we spent what, like five minutes sharpening this knife, not even, before we shot this video. Um, so with very little effort, you can get this guy screaming, screaming sharp, and the edge geometry on it is really nice. Um, hard to pick a winner on this one. I'm gonna say we're a draw going through the carrot test here. So let's move on to uh, bell peppers. Really nice performance. Uh, I, I was finding the it was having a little bit of a tough time with the with the skin here. Um, now this guy's super super thin, but what I noticed with the Tosaichi guys is they don't have quite as nice a, a, a um, sort of gradual um, sort of transition from cutting edge into uh, uh, secondary uh, angle. Yeah, like they've kind of got some larger shoulders on them a little bit. Like uh, there's, they're still very thin behind the edge, but I wonder uh, if that's kind of impacting um, with the bell pepper test. I find the Yoshikane uh, like very, very gradual. It's got like no shoulders on it whatsoever. So we'll see how that transi translates into uh, bell pepper cutting. But uh, I'm certainly not disappointed with the performance on this guy. I'd be very happy with this knife uh, cutting bell peppers. Um, it just didn't like uh, wow me uh, like uh, like it did on the carrot test. So let's see uh, let's see how the Yoshikane does. Maybe we're just dealing with some real tough skinned peppers today. Okay, this was a little more in line with what I was kind of expecting for the whole test here today. Uh, Yoshikane definitely outperformed the Tosaichi in this particular test. Um, again, I think going back to the edge geometry that we have on both of these knives, uh, the Yoshikane being a little more gradual. Um, uh, really no uh, like primary uh, cutting edge is visible on here. It, pr it pretty much just gradually turns uh, from from uh, primary bevel into into cutting edge there without any sort of like shoulder on the on the edges whatsoever. Um, and I think that really lent itself well to this pepper test. So um, Yoshikane definitely gets the edge on the pepper test between uh, these two knives so far. So let's move on to uh, onions. Here we go. Okay, yeah, uh, th th that was awesome. Uh, pretty much all you could ever ask for out of a knife when doing onions. I think the really flat profile, this guy's uh, really helping us out with these. So when I was using the tip of the knife, that reverse tanto tip really uh, makes makes that up and down uh, chopping motion as you're doing your, uh, your incisions on the onion really, really nice. I was getting down to the board uh, with good contact very easily because of how flat it is towards the tip there. Um, I always find it, maybe this is why I used to gravitate towards these thinner knives, is I find that they they really perform well at the, the, the incisions on the onion, being so thin at the tip here. Um, it's really easy to get the knife in and out without the uh, the pieces like flailing up at you, which can sometimes happen with the, the thicker or the slightly stickier knives. Um, edge, uh, I should say um, food release on this guy was was good with the onions as well. As I just mentioned, uh, I didn't get any of those uh, frilly pieces up, which uh, can be super annoying. You gotta like rejig everything before you uh, do your cross cuts on them. Um, doing the cross cuts felt, felt really nice as well. Um, Again, that flat profile, I think, really helped us out there. And then on the Julienne, that was uh, beautiful, very easy. Felt uh, felt really, really comfortable. And I think that weight forward in the blade on this guy really made that up and down chopping motion uh, very nice to do. So, so nice, in fact, that we're losing light here. Onion test, Yoshikane, 210 millimeter Kiritsuke style Gyuto. It's got a hair on it. Here we go, Whew. Okay, man. Um, I hate to keep giving points to the Yoshikane, but I feel like I gotta give the points to the Yoshikane again on this one. Um, 
very nice taper down towards the tip on this guy. So while it starts out almost twice as thick as the Tosayuchi right out of the handle, uh, by the time you're down at the tip, it's still a little thicker, uh, but not noticeably so. And I wasn't finding any sort of stickiness at the tip or those, those, uh, those pieces sort of flailing up at me when I was doing my dice. Um, cross cut, doing the dice felt phenomenal as well. Um, Again, I really think the edge geometry on this guy is what's uh, is what's uh, making it so feel so special. Um, the uh, Julien was super nice as well. Um, I didn't really talk about the profile at the intro on this video, uh, but the flat spot on this guy is pretty sizable. It's like it doesn't really start to curve up till right about here, um, which means when you're doing that up and down chopping motion, you have about as much flat spot on this guy as you do on the uh, on the Tosaichi. Maybe not quite. Um, but certainly enough to do that Julienne with uh, with uh, uh, with relative ease. Um, yeah, so the Tosaichi again performed really well at this test, but it th 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 this guy just felt very, very nice. So I got to give the edge to the Yoshikane, which I believe puts us at uh, two points to zero uh, Yoshikane to Tosaichi going into Sweet Taters. Yeah, which is going to be our last test. Okay, I don't know if Jake will include my initial thoughts going into this test in the video, but yeah, yeah but, so going into this test, my initial thought is the Tosichi's gonna win, just because it's longer and I find the like really thin knives don't wedge at all when they go yeah. through. But we'll see. Uh, we came into this thinking the Tosichi was gonna win. We still have not tested this knife, so it still could, but it's, uh, it's, got, uh, some, uh, it's got some serious competition with the Yoshikane on this test. Um, I personally thought that because of how thin the Tosaichi was, both at the spine and behind the edge, that it would outperform the Yoshikane in this particular test. Um, having said that, after just using the Yoshikane on a sweet potato, holy smokes, like, uh, I mean, you guys probably saw, whew, like nothing, going through like a hot knife through butter. Um, you know, even uh, generally I at home will use a 240 when I'm doing my uh, sweet potato for the week. And um, I've, I've always found that those really thin knives go through much easier. So to feel the way that this one went through that sweet potato, especially doing those longer cuts and especially like the push cut down, which generally is not what I would do. I generally use those tip drawing strokes as I'm going through um, a sweet potato. Uh, this guy performed super, super well. Uh, I did not find any serious wedging. Um, uh, the food release wasn't great, obviously. You probably saw when I was doing uh, the, my cutting into like, I mean, not bat batonet, but but you know what I'm trying to say, like into the French fries. Um, I was getting some serious height on my uh, on my on my cuts there. Um, so uh, the food release, I guess you, you it's hard to argue that the food release was great for that particular task. But you probably noticed when I switched to the to the tip drawing, uh, none of that was happening anymore. Food release was great um, with that with that using that particular uh, style of cutting. Um, and yeah, again, just feels really really nice in the hand. It feels really sturdy, even though it's super thin behind the edge um, that slightly thicker spine really it gives it like a more robust feel so you've kind of got the balance um, really nice balance here between like something that feels robust that, but that cuts like a laser so really impressed with this after the sweet potato but uh, let's not count our chickens before they've hatched uh, we'll do Tosaichi now man okay so this is, good, this is a tough one uh, that that felt phenomenal as well um, I, it's, I hesitate to give a point one way or the other because they both performed really, really well. I think though, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give the slight edge to the Tosaichi. I think just with the extra length on this guy made um, it feel a little bit better to me. Um, though again, if I, were, if I had both of these knives beside me and I had to decide which one I was gonna use for a sweet potato, I'd have a real tough time deciding. Um, I would say that both of these sweet potatoes were on sort of like the medium small size. So maybe if we were uh, dealing with even larger sweet potatoes and, and honestly the one I cut with the Tosaichi was a little bit larger. So my opinion may have been quite different if I had cut the larger one with the, with the Yoshikane. Um, so for, for that reason, I think the, the Tosaichi has to get an ever so slight edge on this one. Um, if it was a closer race coming into this last test, I would maybe give a half point to the Tosaichi um, over the Yoshikane, but because the Yoshikane has two points already, it's gonna win no matter what. Um, I can give a full point to the Tosaichi on this one. Both knives perform exceptionally well. Um, in terms of performance, again, slight, slight edge to the Yoshikane, you, I, I definitely, feel like the performance is better on this guy, but 
with everything considered, price and everything, uh, you've got two very evenly matched knives here. Uh, I definitely enjoy the feel in the hand more on the on the Yoshikane than I did the Tosaichi. Uh, I guess it will also depend on exactly what you're planning to use with the knife, right? So we did all vegetables today. Um, things may have been different, again, if we had done some slicing, like brisket or or like a big ribeye or, or raw fish or something like that. Um, I think the extra length on the Tosaichi may have, may have uh, gotten at a couple points there. Um, but with the test that we did today, uh, two points to the Yoshikane, one point to the Tosaichi. Yoshikane is your winner for the Battle of the Blades, Kritsuke Gito style. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Slice up that like button if you like this video. Subscribe to our channel for more knife-related content. Till the next one, stay sharp.